So to start us off, let's talk about Jackal's loadout. So with Jackal's loadout, you have the choice between the C7E or the PDW-9 as your primary options. And then you kind of have a primary shotgun as well, but no one really uses that. So your best bet is always going to be the C7E or the PDW-9. Now, depending on what kind of play style you guys like to play under, or how aggressive or passive you are, we'll get into that later, that'll kind of determine what weapon you should be using. If you'd like to take longer range gunfights, hold angles, and make the enemy peek you, then the C7E is a great option for this, not only because it has the 2.0 optic on it, but also it's extremely low recoil. If you'd like to play aggressive, and you know get up in the enemy's face a little bit, you can run the PDW-9, for example, with the holographic and angled grip, gives you a much faster ADS speed and also the large optic doesn't really block your peripheral vision like the two times does. So I really leave that decision up to you, but ultimately I do run the C7E just a little bit more than the PDW-9, but it really is depending on how I'm feeling on that day or what playstyle I am playing under. As for Jackal's secondary options, he has a choice between the USP-40 or the ITA-12S. Now there's really no reason for you to not be running the secondary shotgun. Both of Jackal's primary weapons have plenty of ammo for multiple gunfights in one mag. So if you're finding yourself caught in situations where you're mag dumping and having to reload in the middle of a gunfight, then I think that's a bigger issue than just the operator. Now, when you are running the shotgun on Jackal, it gives you a lot of versatility, especially with scanning footprints, but also it gives you versatility in terms of your roles and everything like that. This allows you to do vertical play, horizontal play on soft walls to open up kill holes, and a whole bunch of other map manipulation that you can use with the shotgun. So if I were you, I heavily suggest using the shotgun as your secondary option. It just makes you much more versatile, and you can manipulate the map in such ways so that way you can put the defenders in worse positions and make things more favorable for you. Before we carry on with the video, I want to mention that you guys can get access to the official Astralis weapon skin for Jackal, and in my opinion, is one of the cleanest Pro League sets that has came out recently. I mean, just look at the uniform and gun skin on screen right now. With the white attachment skin, tell me you don't want that. Tell me you don't. It looks amazing. You can get the Astralis skins by going to the shop tab, scrolling down to the esports button, and clicking it. Now lastly, Jackal's secondary utility option. You have the choice between a smoke grenade and a claymore. Now recently, as the time of this recording, there is a test server mid-season patch currently going on where all attackers are receiving two claymores. It has not been implemented into live build quite yet. So what I will say is that if that change is implemented, then potentially running claymore could be higher up on your list between these two secondary pieces of utility. But I very, very rarely run the claymore on Jackal. And the main reason for that is because smoke is much more versatile in terms of using it and allowing it to support you as the attackers. Whether you need to burn an ADS or will my magnet so that way your teammate behind you can nade a shield or just using the smoke as a line of sight cutoff, smoke grenades have a lot of great uses and can definitely help out the team every single round if utilized properly. So the most ideal Jackal loadout for me is either the PDW-9 or the C7E. Personally, I do run the C7E just a little bit more. I like the feeling of the weapon when I am playing Jackal a little bit more than the PDW-9. For Jackal's secondary weapon option, I would 100% go with the secondary shotgun. Like I said, it makes you much more applicable throughout the round and allows you to manipulate the map in many more ways. And then for secondary utility, I would opt for the smoke grenade, but if the two claymore change does come in, then that, that could be a little bit higher on the totem pole in terms of the options. Now that we've broken down Jekyll's loadout, let's also break down his primary piece of utility. So as most of you watching this video right now know, Jackal is a scanning operator. He's an intel operator. He sees footprints, he holds F, and bam, intel. But another layer to Jackal's primary gadget is what operators leave what footprints. So there's four categories for the entire defending team. Now the graphic on screen is a little old. The most recent operator I believe is Malusi. So not all of them are categorized, but a large majority of them are. So in group A, you see Mute, Doc, Valk, and Mira. Now in this group, you see a very specific footprint. Now with those four operators, those are the only ones who are able to leave that footprint and potentially other defenders that got added into the game recently that aren't on this chart. So if you see that footprint, you know it's one of those four operators. Now in group B, you have Smoke, Castle, Pulse, Rook, Maestro, and many others. Now in group B, you have a specific footprint as well. And then group C, the same thing as well as group D. So kind of memorizing those footprints and applying them to what operators are being brought and not brought can be a huge benefit to the team, especially when you guys don't know who all five defenders are. 
And then if you look at the bottom of this graphic, you can also see a heat map. Now within this heat map, this is how long ago the footprint was placed. So in the red section, it is up to 17.5 seconds. So from zero seconds to 17.5 seconds, that footprint was placed in that area. So whenever you might see a red footprint on the map somewhere, you need to be very cautious in that area. And then it transitions from red into yellow and then into green in that same section as well. And that's from 19.5 to 45 seconds. So in that section, you still should be cautious, especially when the footprint is yellow. But as it moves more towards the green color, that's when you know, hey, this person most likely isn't in this area, so now I should maybe get information. And then so on and so on throughout that chart, the heat map changes and the color changes according to how long ago the footprint was placed. Now going off of this heat map, I wanna give you guys a tip with Jackal Scanner. Whenever you're in an area where there's a red footprint, sometimes scanning it may not always be the best option. Since you know that if the footprint is red, it can only be as old up to 17.5 seconds, that person could be in the media area and you may not want to scan them and make them rotate out because you could trap them with a teammate and kill that roamer. So what I suggest you do is potentially playing off of a teammate there, having them drone while you keep your gun up ready for the gunfight if they do peek, and then you get much more solid information on said person and you actually see them off of the drone and then you and your teammate can play off of one another and kill that roamer and shut him down. But when it does come time to scanning footprints and pinging a defender, make sure you're always calling out what defender it is and where they are. Since you are the one playing Jackal, a large point of your focus is going to be figuring out where is that footprint that I just scanned. And if you can add on to that and saying what operator it is and also calling out where that person is to your team, that can also be a huge benefit to everyone on the attacking side. Instead of them looking around the map looking for that red Jackal scan, you can just simply call that information out so that way they don't need to deal with that and they can fi finish their tasks at hand. Now I want to talk about the selection of scanning certain operators. So as some of you guys might know, there's a grouping of operators that are usually considered the roaming operators or the off the bomb site operators. So just looking at this graphic on screen here, we can kind of tell what operators we should be a little bit more worried about with their footprints versus other operators. So for group A, for example, the only operator really there that could be considered a roamer of some sort is Valkyrie. So if you see a footprint like that in the appropriate situation, most of those operators are going to be on the bomb site. So therefore that information isn't necessarily useless, but you cannot play off of it as well as you may be if you were to track a roamer and you know follow the right footsteps off of this chart. Now in group B, there are a few roamers in there, potentially Mozzie, Pulse, and Oryx. And then group C is where a heavy majority of the roamers are going to be. Jaeger most likely, Bandit potentially, Caviera definitely, as well as Vigil and Ella. Malusi could be considered a roamer, as well as Legion and Alibi. So kind of looking at the chart and playing off of your own scanner with these footprints can be a great benefit for maximizing the intel versus scan game. So memorizing this chart and kind of understanding what operators are in which group and then seeing the footprints in those situations and deciding should I scan this person or not based off their footprint. Next, I want to talk about what role Jackal should be fitting into. So really, Jackal is a jack of all trades. He can either play the passive, laid back, watching flank, just getting information role, or he can play much more aggressive, kind of on that entry fragger role. Now, if you're someone who likes to play a little bit more passive on Jackal, then what I suggest you do is potentially setting up flank drones. Since you're not going to be as active on your scanner and things like that, closer to the bomb site or as you're taking the map control. And if you're going to be playing much more aggressive and you don't have someone droning you in as the entry fragger, then using your Jackal scanner can be a great help at potentially finding out where someone is very close to you. So like I said, Jackal is an overall great operator and can definitely fit the passive or aggressive roles. Continuing the discussion with Jackal's primary gadget, let's talk about Jackal's counters. So Jackal only has two primary counters, and the first one being Caviera's Silent Step. When this ability is activated on Caviera, she puts down no footprints around the map. And the second counter is going to be Mute's Jammers. When in the radius of a Mute Jammer and your scanner is activated, it kind of goes pixelated and fuzzy. So you definitely don't want to have that activated while you're in the radius of a Mute Jammer. And that brings me to my next point, which is not always playing with your scanner on. I see it time and time again, especially in lower elo, where the person playing Jackal is always having the scanner on and it ends up getting them killed or potentially taking damage. Now the reason for keeping Jackal scanner off for a large majority of the round 
is because when you are shot, it has the same effect as the Mew Jammer. And that could potentially inhibit your ability to see someone and take that gunfight from whoever's shooting you. So don't put yourself at a disadvantage while having the scanner on and just have it off up until the point where you know someone's close and you want to scan them or you don't know exactly where someone is so you want to find out where their footprints lead to. Now that's everything I have for you guys today in today's video. If you guys enjoyed or learned something from it, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the Astralis R6 channel. But with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new and I'll catch you guys in the next one.